majestic pageantry, unbridled spirit, and beautiful color, coupled with top individual and team performances, the complete spectrum of quality that is a bowl game. The Liberty Bowl's commitment to that excellence is a signpost of the true American character. Distinguished Service Award winner, Vice Admiral William Lawrence, expressed thoughts about having such an event. I think it's wonderful that we have a postseason football bowl that bears the name Liberty, which is a national symbol of our proud heritage. And what a wonderful way to pay tribute to the Statue of Liberty than to have it as the principal theme of this year's Liberty Bowl. The 1984 Liberty Bowl Classic would reaffirm America's proud heritage and live up to the lady it was saluting. The 1984 Liberty Bowl Classic is brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis and by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association. The 26th Annual Liberty Bowl Week began with a beer stuba presented by the Stroh's Brewing Company. School officials, families, alumni, and fans were given a chance to eat, get acquainted, and celebrate the holidays away from home. Bowl founder and executive director Bud Dudley welcomed head coaches Pat Dye and Ken Hatfield to festive Memphis. After indulging in the scrumptious food, the guests engaged in a little dancing to burn a few calories. Auburn's chief fan, Sue Dye, caught the Tennessee spirit and showed a fancy step or two. The first stop for the players was the Mayor's Luncheon at Leon's Supper Club, where the dancing performed by the Memphis Showboat football cheerleaders grabbed the athletes' attention. On behalf of all the citizens of the Mid-South, let us say welcome to Memphis and tell you how excited we are to have both teams in our city. I don't know of any other thing in our city that we put more pleasure in than having the opportunity to invite people like yourself to come to our city to have this contest. I know that uh, the city is very pleased and uh, the talk around the community is that this is one of the most exciting bowls that we've ever had. When you get in Arkansas and Auburn together, it's got to be a great contest. Mayor Hackett's and Morris comments, along with the good food served in abundance, made the players feel right at home on Christmas Eve. Always a lot of fun at the mayor's party is the player performances. This year's sing-along added to the holiday mood. Memphis's Overton Square shopping district, with its many eateries like Friday's, were favorite places to frequent. Our biggest concern this week is elephants. Okay, we do not want to eat so much we look like elephants. And that's the biggest thing we got to fight with all this hospitality. Because our guys do know how to eat. They know how to have a good time. Makeshift pep calls sprung up everywhere as fans were quick to show their allegiance. Studebaker's restaurant, with its unique atmosphere, delicious food, and friendly, fun-loving employees, was a hot hit. While the players 
danced in the aisles, Memphis society was sparkling at the annual black tie dinner dance. The southern charm and hospitality provided a splendid evening enjoyed by all. The gala was accented by the unveiling of the Liberty Bowl's very own bronze statue of liberty, which fueled the guests' appetite for the upcoming halftime production honoring the Harbor Lady. With the Bronze Lady looking on, the highlight of the pregame festivities, the Liberty Bowl luncheon took place. A record 2,100 players, school officials, and Liberty Bowl guests assembled in Memphis's Mid-South Coliseum for this most prestigious event, where the contest coaches addressed the crowd. To all the people in Memphis, we just want to thank you for letting us be part of your lives and part of the fellowship we've enjoyed and will continue to enjoy here the next couple of days. Again, as life goes on, you only pass this way once, and the people you're around love you're able to share and give is something that can never be taken away. We've had a great time. We look forward to the game with an outstanding Arkansas team tomorrow night, and we think we'll have a great game. 1984 Liberty Bowl Classic President Joseph Williams introduced the annual Distinguished Service Award winner. During the Vietnam War, while serving as commanding officer of a fighter squadron, Admiral Lawrence was shot down over North Vietnam. As a prisoner of war for nearly six years, he underwent hardships we cannot even imagine. Among other things he did to maintain his composure and his sanity, Admiral Lawrence wrote a poem called O Tennessee, My Tennessee, which is now designated as the official state poem. Let's listen to the words of this poem and try to imagine the conditions under which it was written. Tennessee, my Tennessee, what love and pride I feel for thee. You proud old state, the volunteer, your fine traditions I hold dear. I revere your many heroes who bravely fought our country's foes. Renowned statesmen so wise and strong who served our country well and long. I thrill at thought of mountains grand rolling green hills and fertile farmland, earth rich with stone, mineral, and ore, forests dense and wildflowers galore, powerful rivers that bring us light, deep lakes with fish and fowl in flight, thriving cities and industries, fine schools and universities, strong folks of pioneer descent, simple, honest, and reverent. Beauty and hospitality are the hallmarks of Tennessee. And o'er the world as I may roam, no place exceeds my boyhood home. And oh, how much I long to see my native land, my Tennessee. Vice Admiral Lawrence's comments struck a true American note. I feel that more than any national pastime, football exemplifies the true American spirit. Football is the uniquely American game. It's no surprise that no other nation has popularized football as we have done because no other nation has a similar national character or has achieved what our nation has achieved. With game time only a few hours away, excitement was in the air at the annual pregame buffet. Over 3,000 Liberty Bowl charter members and friends indulged in a bit of school spirit. We want the pork chop! He's a real big, strong bird that's going to fly strong tonight. We're all go! I'm so big, so <laughs> With all the pregame festivities complete, Arkansas entered sold-out Memorial Stadium, ready to meet preseason poll favorite Auburn in what many had termed a battle of the wishbone.
head coaches Ken Hatfield and Pat Dye both base their team's chances to win on ground performance. Auburn running back Bo Jackson's effort in particular. A preseason favorite for the Heisman Trophy, Jackson's injuries hampered his regular season. But many look for whether the Razorbacks could harness number 34 as one of the game's keys. Another key was Auburn's ability to contain Arkansas quarterbacks from implementing their big play offense. The battle for Liberty Bowl supremacy was started by world-renowned Marguerite Piazza's singing of the national anthem. Arkansas wins the coin toss and elects to go head-to-head -head against the War Eagles and Bo Jackson. Defensive end Raven Caldwell makes the big play, holding Jackson in check on the game's first series. The Razorbacks open with their best throwing quarterback, senior Brad Taylor. Taylor completes passes to Eddie White for 24 yards and Bobby Joe Edmonds for 11 yards. The game's first blood is drawn as Greg Horn splits the uprights from 31 yards. After a 10-play drive, Arkansas leads 3 to nothing. On the War Eagles' second possession, Jackson gets the ball in the open field on a quick screen. Away from the pinching Arkansas interior line, Jackson breaks free for 25 yards. Reading that the defense is stacked for the run, Pat Washington fires to Clayton Buford, who is wrestled down on a touchdown-saving tackle by Kevin Anderson. The Tigers have marched 79 yards in little more than four minutes. Bo Jackson finishes the scoring drive with a one-yard plunge for a 6-3 lead. A replay of Jackson's touchdown run shows his great strength and determination at the goal line. For the remainder of the first half, Arkansas's defense would limit the Auburn star to a mere three yards and the entire Tiger offense to 18 yards. But that scoring drive showed what a bow fuel Tiger attack could do. The ensuing kickoff found good fortune smiling on Pat Dye's Tigers. Reggie Hall barely scrambled out of his own end zone, putting his mates in poor field position. The job of getting breathing room away from your own goal line is never an easy task, but against a fired up Tiger wave, it's nearly impossible. The Hogs turn to the air only to have Tiger cornerback Kevin Porter step in. Porter streaks down the sideline 35 yards and into the end zone for the score. Being in a zone coverage with deep help gave the freshman the opportunity to go for the ball and make the play of his life. Washington added the two-point conversion, making up for the earlier missed point after touchdown. And the Tigers took a 14-3 first quarter lead. Things didn't get better for Razorback fans as the Hogs gained only 131 yards for the entire first half.
When Razorback quarterback Danny Nutt's tip pass was picked off by Arthur Johnson inside the 15-yard line, Tiger fans sensed a blowout. Ken Hatfield's hog defense hadn't come to play just one half, and their efforts were rewarded as the Tigers' miss gave the Hogs a lift for the second half. As the teams exited, the fans stayed in their seats waiting in anticipation for another patented Liberty Bowl halftime extravaganza. Let's salute the Statue of Liberty. The statue was a gift of the people of France in 1876 to honor our Declaration of Independence on America's 100th birthday. Today, the statue still stands as America's invitation to all to come and share freedom with us. Its light shines out today for each of us. We want this great statue to stand securely for generations to come, to continue as a beacon, a symbol of hope to those yearning to breathe free. Liberty Bowl spectacle exemplifying America and what the Statue of Liberty stands for hope and liberty for all Arkansas brought their hopes back for the second half and as if enlivened by the halftime theme started on a drive When Brad Taylor threw to a diving James Shebest at the Auburn 37-yard line, Arkansas had its deepest penetration since its opening drive and optimism for the remaining 25 minutes. After a punt pinned Auburn inside its own five-yard line, Brent Fullwood pulled off one of the great Liberty Bowl runs. Only eight yards total, but two would-be broken safety tackles later, the Tigers had avoided disaster. Arkansas's third quarter drives would flirt with success only to have something happen. Victor Beasley's interception would short circuit one. A quick burst up the middle by hog fullback Derek Thomas for 14 yards and a pump fake and throw to tight end Theo Young started another. Arkansas had begun to assert itself by dominating the clock but still the score 14 to 3 remained the same. 
On fourth down at the Auburn 32, the Razorbacks gambled and lost as she best couldn't come up with an underthrown pass and turned the ball over. Long Auburn march would all but salt the game away. But Washington's pitch was bobbled, and Nathan Jones put a red helmet on Fullwood's chest. Jones's hit and subsequent hustle to make the fumble recovery gave the Hogs something to finally cheer about. Fullback number 32, Marshall Foreman, knifed his way in for the score. Deciding to go for two, Taylor rolled and overthrew Shebest in the back of the end zone. Auburn still led by five, 14 to nine. The Razorbacks, pumped up by their own big play defense, once again shut down Auburn and Bo Jackson. The vaunted Tiger attack was good for only 53 second half yards at the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter. Feeling his defense was as good as gold, Hatfield gambled again on fourth and one. Taylor found a wide open Bobby Joe Edmonds flying down the sideline, but it wasn't to be. Up to now, Auburn's ineffective second half offense retaliated. Collis Campbell chewed up nine tough yards. Then, Bo Jackson, who had been harnessed since his first quarter feats, took a pitch left and with a quick move was gone to increase Auburn's advantage. Fifty-five yards in five plays with Jackson's 39-yard dash punctuating the drive. Number 34 had hung his number up with past Liberty Bowl MVPs like Doug Flutie for dominating games. With five minutes and 38 seconds remaining on the clock and down by 12 points, Arkansas looked at Auburn's kickoff as a possible game-breaking play. Carl Miller cradled the ball just inside the goal line. 32 yards and an unbelievable return. Arkansas had started its comeback. Utilizing the entire field against the Auburn prevent defense, the Razorbacks moved the ball. Every wrinkle or trick was pulled from the hog playbook. Faced with another fourth down, Taylor dropped and once again went to his favorite target, Shebest. Shebest made the catch to pull the hogs close once again. Arkansas fans, remembering the come-from-behind games during the regular season, read the 21-15 scoreboard and hoped for one last chance. With 39 seconds remaining, Arkansas got the ball back. After a quick completion, Arkansas had three ticks of the clock left. Bobby Joe Edmonds hauled in his 10th reception, a Liberty Bowl record but couldn't avoid all the Tiger defenders to score. Auburn had won the 26th annual Liberty Bowl Classic, 21 to 15. For head coach Pat Dye and his Auburn Tigers, it was a victory and moment in the spotlight to savor. For Ken Hatfield's Arkansas Razorbacks, it was just a matter of time running out on them. And for the Liberty Bowl fans in attendance and millions watching on television, it was a game to remember. A game filled with heroic performances by the young men of both teams.
Nathan Jones was the Razorbacks' most valuable defensive player, while Marshall Foreman was the most valuable on offense. For the Tigers, Kevin Porter was most valuable on defense, while Greg Carr received the Scholar Athlete Award. Bill Goforth, president of Holiday Inn's Communications, presented both the Tiger Offensive and Game's Most Valuable Player trophies to outstanding junior running back, Bo Jackson, whose dynamic performance made him a preseason favorite for the Heisman Trophy in 1985 as college football's premier player. What a climax to a great Liberty Bowl week. Players, coaches, and fans from diverse backgrounds brought together in an American melting pot, the Liberty Bowl, to enjoy and honor one of America's true symbols, the Statue of Liberty. The 1984 Liberty Bowl Classic has been brought to you by the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Memphis. And by the Liberty Bowl Festival Association.